What's up, YouTube, and what to you know? My name is Domino with the Zero, and welcome to another Pokemon Sun and Moon anime review. Today, we're reviewing episode 43. Now, this episode went up last week, but um, I'm actually recording this like, what time is it? Five minutes after I wanted the video to go up, so it's been busy. But anyway, we're gonna jump straight into this episode because this episode was absolutely amazing, and there's so much to talk about. Um, I took some notes on this as well as having screenshots from the, the episode up in front of me. Um, so I'm going to try not to go on for too long and not give just like the play by play of what happened. Um, but the episode starts off, of course, where this episode we're taking on gym battles by Brock and Misty. And there were amazing battles. We saw four battles in total. Um, two of them were gym leader versus two people. And then the last two were 1v1 full on battles. Uh, so it starts off with, uh, well, actually, first, before before we even get into that, um, the first thing that happens, Kukui's talking about the battles, and he says it's going to be hotter than a blast burn, which super triggers me because Greninja got hit by a blast burn to lose the last league. Can we just, like, ban those two words from the Sun and Moon anime? I never want to hear them again. It still brings back terrible memories. But anyway, uh... <clears throat> They're talking about how uh, the gym leaders give out badges and they show the badges and all of the new people freak out about them and Ash goes, yeah, I earned eight of them being his usual prideful self and Brock and Misty um, are like, yeah, you didn't actually earn them. We just gave these to you out of pity. It's a funny little scene that happens. Um, one of many funny scenes that happen. So the first battle is Misty versus Lana and Mallow. And at first I was like, why are they doing one versus two? It's very strange. And Misty has her, um, oh, you know what I forgot to say? Um, Misty and Brock seem to run this gym together. Uh, when they introduced, they, they reintroduced Misty as the gym leader of that gym, and they introduced Brock as the former gym leader of Pewter, which is very strange. And the way this gym is formatted is it's like, there's water, but there's also like a ground, like rock level. So I think they run it together and you can kind of see that as it goes through. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. So Misty versus uh, Lana and Mallow um, is actually going to be Misty's Psyduck, who apparently watched over the gym while Misty was gone, um, versus Poplio and um, was it Steeny? I think it, I think is its name. Um, so it starts off uh, with them attacking uh, they, them attacking Psyduck. Like at first I was like, well, Misty's obviously going to lose this, um, but the way it turns out. Uh, after getting hit by a magical leaf, Psyduck uses water gun. Poplio fills the water, fills a balloon with this water, launches it back at Psyduck, and exactly what you would expect to happen happens. Psyduck falls on his head. Mallow's like, oh, I'm so sorry for hurting you. Um, and uh, Psyduck wakes up and uses confusion because now his head hurts and now he has his power. So he lifts both of them up and Misty says, okay, the battle's over, and she claps and Psyduck gets control of himself and lets the other two down and is real confused and then of course per his usual dumb self he then realizes that he's in pain uh, and we see Misty love on Psyduck a little bit it's pretty cool the second battle is Brock versus Lily and Sophocles I didn't expect Lily to be battling in this but she actually was she actually seemed to be really into it uh, and even launch some powerful moves. So it starts off with Sophocles' stupid self launching an electric attack at Geodude because he doesn't know that Geodude is ground type. So they give a little explanation on the type differences. And then Lily says, I got this, and fires off a Powder Snow um, from Snowball. Not Snowflake. I think I said Snowflake last time. It's actually Snowball. Um, and Geodude uses um, Gyro Ball to spin the Powder Snow away. And then the battle's over. I don't know. I was, I almost thought that this is how all of the battles were going to go in this episode, but it's not. So stay tuned. Um, but Brock then explains, you know, his whole strategy and Lily seems to be really into this whole gym leader thing. So maybe, you know, Lily's coming back in Ultra Sun and Moon. Maybe she's going to wind up being a gym leader. The way that it showed here, like she has little stars around her. Like she's, she loves that idea. Um, I miss anything? Nope. Um, so the next one is a serious battle, and it's going to be Brock versus Kiawe. Um, when they, they start talking about what the next battle is going to be, Kiawe says, I want a one-on-one -on -one with Brock. And uh, Ash says, I want a one-on-one -on -one with Misty. And Kukui's like, sure, let's do it. 
So it winds up being Turtonator versus Steelix, which is no surprise. It's both of their, uh, both of each other's um, aces, right? So Brock's, or excuse me, Kiawe's Marowak is seen on the sideline, hanging out and watching. And remember that because it does come back to play. Um, the battle turns out to be amazing. It starts off with Steelix taking a flamethrower straight to the face, no damage, and then goes to bind Turtonator. Turtonator responds with a, cell, a shell trap, sending Steelix flying back, and they both acknowledge each other. You're strong, so are you, etc., etc. Um, so Kiawe states that it's time to use his Z move, and uh, or after after a little bit of more battle, you know, Steelix uses the whole dig thing because that's like a staple thing in the anime is Pokemon coming up from one another, and. Um, Kiawe says, all right, it's time for our Z move. And Brock says, I've heard of the Z move thing. If you're gonna fight at full force, then allow me to fight at full force. And he takes off his shirt and he's standing in his powerful red and blue, um, red and blue Sprite uh, stance, which is really cool. He looks just like he did in first generation games. It's the first time we've ever seen Brock look like this. It's, it just adds on to the amazingness of the gym. So he pulls out his mega, uh, his mega stone and Steelix goes mega. Mega Steelix is super awesome to see. Um, none of the new people had ever seen anything mega. So of course they have to go through the little explanation and Brock says, let me see your Z move. So he fires an Inferno Overdrive, I think is what it's called. I think that's what it's called. Um, Terminator fires, Infer fires Inferno Overdrive at Steelix, and Steelix takes it straight on. Doesn't move because he's slow, obviously. Uh, but after the smoke clears, and of course Steelix is still standing, Brock says, it looks like it re that really damaged my Steelix. But then he orders for a Stone Edge. Kiawe tries to, get, tries to fight back with a Dragon Tail. Unfort is not successful, and Mega Steelix does win. Um, so after some more explanation about Mega Evolution, Brock is seen putting back his clothes back on. Um, and then this is the funny part. Marowak comes and, uh, I guess, headbutts Kiawe and uh, Turtonator and is visibly upset at their loss. Um, it was pretty funny. So next up is Misty versus Ash. Did I miss anything in that? <clears throat> I did not. So, next up is Misty versus Ash. And like I had said before, the gym was laid out in a rock format. So Misty comes up and pulls a lever, the rocks go away, and the, the stadium is filled with water. Um, because, of course, Misty's going to be fighting. Now, Sophocles and Kiawe sitting in the stands are like, uh, or Ash looks uh, extremely excited about this. He's like, oh, I wouldn't expect any different. Uh, I'm so happy it's a water stadium. And Sophocles, excuse me, Sophocles goes, um, doesn't he know that his Pokemon has nowhere have nowhere to stand? And Ash looks up at him and goes, Sophocles, Kiawe, it's okay. Don't worry about it. And then my favorite moment of the episode happens. Uh, Ash kneels down to, and looks at Pikachu and goes, Pikachu, I'm counting on you. And gives him a fist bump. Pikachu jumps up and fist bumps him back and jumps out and looks extremely confident. Easily my favorite part of the episode. It was that, it was, that was so cool to see that. So... Of course, Misty throws out her Gyarados, who looks as powerful as ever. Uh, Rodom overhypes Gyarados, talking about burning down cities and stuff. And all of Ash's Pokemon can be seen standing by. So it starts off with, um, as all of Ash's battles do. Do any of Ash's battles start any differently? Ash launches a Thunderbolt. Misty launches a Hydro Pump and exclaims, How do you like that? You can block electric moves with water. <laughs> to which Rodom responds, uh, ca cannot compute with the very his normal confused face. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, Ash goes for, or Pikachu goes for quick attack, slams Gyarados. Gyarados responds with a rain dance. How's it raining? It's inside, etc., etc. Uh, and then <laughs> Misty's got to chill. Misty tells Gyarados to use Hurricane to um to eliminate uh our pikachu's electro ball and of course it works because it's hurricane in rain uh, misty needs to chill out but this garris is super strong so misty gets ash's attention and she has a mega ring hanging from her little ponytail that she has going on and of course mega gyarados is here to play uh, so let's see <clears throat> they go through a, it's an amazing battle you've got to check out the episode 
Uh, but let me go ahead and read my notes. Where am I? 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 <clears throat> so um, Pikachu gets lost in the water after Gyarados attacks a bit. Gyarados fo follows, causing Pikachu to have a pretty funny evade to get out of the water and back onto the little land that is available. Um, Ash then orders um, Pikachu to use Iron Tail. Um, while Gyarados is chasing, Pikachu uses the rocks uh, to the flying rocks around from the hurricane to jump on to um, to Gyarados and uses Iron Tail, sending it flying uh, underwater. And we see another one of the ever so um, popular scenes where Gyarados uses a hurricane from underneath Pikachu, causing a tornado, which Misty exclaims, "No one has ever gotten out of before." And uh, Ash yells at Pikachu, "Pikachu, can you hear me?" And after using a thunderbolt, tells Pikachu to quick attack up the thunder, up the electric, the lightning bolts. Yeah, up the lightning bolts to get out of it. And Rodom is seen again with cannot compute. And of course, Pikachu gets out of it and says, or Ash goes, all right, Pikachu, it's time for our Z move. And uses Gigavolt Havoc, smacks Gyarados in the face, and Gyarados is down, giving Ash the victory. Ash looked extremely strong in this video, in, the, in this episode. It's not his usual self where he's using Litten or uh, Rowlet or even Lycanroc. Like, this is Pikachu, and he's he goes 100% all out. And, look like, Pikachu didn't take any damage. I don't think he got hit at all. It's absolutely wild. I really hope that Ash is still as strong as he was in Kalos. Speaking of Kalos, Ash and Misty have a little bit of a, a little flirt moment. Can we bring back Serena? Can we bring back Serena, please? Okay, so the episode, I think that was everything. Um, so they're standing at the airport getting ready to leave and Kukui tells the Oaks that he, he's decided he's gonna make a Pokemon League in Kalos. Um, all of the other people are handed, um, like, uh, they're handed like fake badges uh, and they head back to, um, Alola after saying goodbye to Misty and Brock yet again kind of a sad moment but not too much on the plane back of course is seen Jigglypuff so there are only annoying moments to come and then the last part of the episode is shown with Beware still carrying back Team Rocket from Kanto to Cal or to Alola I still don't know what's going on with Beware so that's the whole episode. I thought this was an amazing episode. I would give it a 10 out of 10. I really thought it was awesome. I don't think they could have done Kiawe or Ash's battles with the others. I don't think they could have done those any better. It was absolutely great. Now, the preview for the next episode was kind of strange. Um, we saw a whole lot of stuff. Uh, I don't know what this first word was. Oh, oh, so it starts off where we see the altar, like altar of the moon or altar of the sun, whichever it is. Uh, we see or we see Wick, we see Professor Burnett, Ash finds Cosmog, we see an Aether Paradise guy, we see Solgaleo, Lunala, Lusamine, who's meeting up with Lily, and Lily avoids, tries to avoid a hug from her, and this whole episode, I think the episode is called, I don't have it pulled up, but it's called, oh wait, I can find it right here. So the episode is called, uh, where am I? Okay, so the episode is called Ash and Nebby, a mysterious encounter. So it looks like Ash is actually going to be the one that gets, um, that gets Nebby, I guess. Now, there is a new poster that was shown that has Lily and Ash up front, which does make sense because Lily is like the daughter of Lusamine. So that's, that's probably going to play a part. But I think this Cosmog is going to wind up being Solgaleo. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see who that goes to. If that's not Lily, I mean, that goes against what happens in the game. So I'm very interested to see what happens in the next episode. Uh, but that's going to go ahead and wrap up our Sun and Moon 43 episode review. Again, let me know what you think if you're watching this in the comments below. They have been getting decent views. So, I mean, I'm going to keep doing them because I love this. And it's really picked up to look really awesome. Um, but let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Let me know what you think about the pace, what I'm talking about, all that stuff. Let me know how I can make it better. And we'll see you next week, hopefully Saturday night uh, and not Monday morning. But we'll see you next time for episode 44 review. Until then, have a blessed day.